All right, so we're gonna move on to new chapter. Um, so this lecture is about countability axioms. Okay, so recall that we have discussed before that X has the first countable basis axiom if for any point there exists a countable collection of neighborhood such that for any neighborhood of X there exists an element from this collection such that it is contained in the neighborhood. Okay, so this condition means that x has the first countable axiom, or x is first countable. So here's some note. In such a space, we can detect convergent sequences whenever x is in a, right, for a and x. So we don't even need x to be uh, matrizable. We just need x to be first countable. Then for x in the closure, we can have some convergent sequence in a that converges to x. And so does the continuity. So the theorem 30.1 Uh, okay, thirty point one is somewhere. Okay, I just all right. So this is really just just a restatement. So for x be in topological space, we let a be a subset of x. So if only if x is first countable. So we discussed this theorem in the section of. Met, uh, metric spaces, right? So the proof is really simple. Like we know A holds if X is matrizable, so we can pass it to this first countable condition. So at each X, we know that there exists a countable basis. We just replace the ball by this intersection, the finite intersection, and the proof of B goes through unchanged, okay? So here we have a new definition, which is called second countable if you have a countable basis, okay? If you have a basis that is a countable set, then you are second countable. And it's clear that second countable implies first countable. Why? Because if B is countable basis for X, then for element in X, we can pick a, a collection of bases that contains, contains X, right? Because x is in b alpha and b alpha is a collection for all alpha and j now j is countable because b is countable right so the first countability axiom follows because for each x we have a countable collection of bases then for any open set right contains x for any neighborhood contains x there exists a basis element such that it is contained in a neighborhood. But this neighborhood must lie in this collection. Right? So the first countability uh, follows. Okay. So some examples. The real number has a countable basis. Just all the uh, rational intervals, like endpoints with rational. Rn is also countable because we have a product of countable. Right, countable is a finite union. You can think about it as a finite union of countable sets, but it's really still countable, right? And our omega has countable bases too, because for all the basis element, finitely of n, right, is equal to a b, or a b is rational, and the others are the real numbers. So this is our omega still have a countable basis, okay? So this leads to this theorem, which is 30.2, says that subspace of first countable is first countable. Countable product of first countable is countable. Subspace of second countable is second countable. And countable product of second countable is second countable. Okay, so we prove it. Uh, we start with second countable. We start with second countable. So if we have basis of x, if we have this basis of x, let me just make it smaller, basis of x, then notice that all the elements like this 
the wood is a countable basis of A. Right? Okay. Now, if beta i can vote basis for each xi, then the product of all bi, right? Each bi is in this countable basis of xi, right? Okay, so the second countable follows immediately, and let's do for first countable. Okay, first countable they'll pick x and a. And we can then we can pick this accountable countable basis at x. Okay? So if you just consider the collection ui intersect a, which means that for any neighborhood v of x and a, then v is some v prime intersect a. Right, v sum v prime, right, or v prime open and x. Now, v prime is open and x, and x is in v, so x is also in v prime, right? So, some some uk. Is in v prime. Now we know that x is in uk intersect a, right? Such that x is in uk, right? For product, not hard. So I just, uh, I just kind of skipped it, okay? So for products are not hard. And here we have a new definition. Well, this definition says that, um, a density. So for A being a subset of X, A is dense in X if the closure of A is equal to X, okay? So this gives a new theorem so it states that suppose that x has a countable basis then every open covering contains a countable subcollection so if x is second countable then every open covering has a countable subcollection and also there exists a countable subset that is dense in x okay so let's just prove a first well to prove a Proof A. <coughs> this one is a bit tricky. Um, so first, we let B n be a count basis of x, right? Then we can just let this be an open cover of x, and now we start defining sets. So for each n, right? Uh, okay, let me just move it here. For each n and n, okay? So what we want to define? We define Sn to be the set of all elements in a collection such that bn is in contain na. Okay, so given a bn combo basis, sn is a set of all open set in a collection such that it contains bn. 
Okay, we're gonna use this. And second, we define J to be the set of all numbers such that S N is not empty. Okay. And now we define S to be the set of all S N or N S N J. Okay, so with these three definitions. So S N is set of all elements such that B N contains B N. And J is where these so when they exist, right? So this corresponding N. So for this, so if you're in J, then we have B N is contained in some A, right? And S is the union of all such S N where N and N J. Okay? So first, from this, we know that by axiom of choice. We know that there exists a function f that maps from the index to the union. Right? This is the statement of axiom of choice. Right? Because here we know that they're all non empty, so we can apply axiom of choice such that f n. S N S N for any N and J, right? This is the statement of axiom of choice. So this is true. Right? Okay. Now we just let A N denote as F N. Right. Now we define a new collection instead of all a n where n is in j now is countable right because it's a n where n is in j well j you see that it is a subset of this right it's a subset of this so it is countable. Okay, so here I want to show that this A covers X. Okay, so this is what we want to show that we have obtained a countable countable subcollection. Right, countable subcover. Alright, so so what is like what is the construction leads to? Right, so we just ultimately want to show that it covers X. Now we know that first we're given that what well, it covers the space, right? It covers the space. Now because they're open, right? We know that there exists a NX such that contain an AX, right? Well, this means that S of NX is not empty, right? Because for S NX, this B NX has an element from A that contains it. So S NX is not empty. So we could just consider, consider element F NX, which is A NX that lives in what? as an X, right? Because this is used to show that this is not empty. And for this being non empty, recall that we have defined a function, the existence of a function, right? We can consider its output on NX, which is a NX and S NX. Well, if a NX is an S NX, then it means that uh, it means that nx and contains a nx, right? But a nx 
is in this collection, right? So we're done. For any x, it is an x such that x is an a n x, right? So we're done part a. Now we do part b. Part b says that, what is part b again? There exists a countable subset as dense nx. Countable subset. So we want to use the strength of countable basis, right? For every non-empty bn, we can fix x n in it, right? And we just let the set d denote the set of all x n. I mean, the set of all x n. Right, set of all x n. Uh, where, like, say n is in, like, j or something, because because not all of the b n is in a non-empty, right? Well, there might be some empty sets, because we're talking about in general cases, right? Because j is countable, though, still, right? So we want to show that d is dense in x. I want to show that d is dense in x. Then, we, then we're done, right? So now, for any x, if u is the neighborhood, if u is the neighborhood of x, then we know that by definition of open sets. <coughs> right. Also, xn is in bn. U, right? And xn is in d, which means that xn is in u intersect d. Well, this means that um, x is in the closure of d, right? Because we pick any point in any neighborhood, we have that their, their intersection is non-empty, right? Their intersection is non-empty, though, right? So it's in the closure. Okay, so this really just concludes um, this lecture. I'll see you guys next time.